common modalités de gouvernance. Mais aussi depuis Belém, ce qui est arrivé, c'est qu'à la fois les régimes sur lesquels on comptait beaucoup en Amérique latine ont eu des expériences mas ou menos réussies, et il y a eu une émergence d'initiatives qui tous peuvent se mettre sous le chapeau des communs, sous le même des communs, si tu veux. Degrowth, uh, name it, peer-to-peer. Uh, Uh, social economy, collaborative economy, commons collaborative economy, I mean, etc. So, comment tu vois ça dans ta propre expérience à toi Comment tu vois cette émergence Comment tu l'as vécu et comment tu, tu la perçois En anglais, excuse me. It's okay. I've been um, involved and the, the commons related to work in thinking about commons for a decade now. And at the beginning one had the impression that as far as the public debate is concerned, you kind of get an overview if you are really involved. Today it is literally impossible to know what's going on because actually so many things are emerging, are popping up, are coming together, are converging, that it is hard to keep track of them. And at the same time, while a few years ago I was thinking about um, contributing to a commons movement, I now would say that it's way more um, useful, it makes more sense, to simply contribute modestly to commons thinking, to, to learn to think like a commoner. Because you may have kind of three, at least three different approaches to the commons, right? One is you look at them as pooled and shared resources to be managed in common. Another one, that, that this is basically the narrative that it's about the resources out there, the water, the land, the code, the knowledge, etc. Another one is to wonder how you actually bring common into being, into life. So look at the social process behind. How does decision making work? How does conflict resolution work? How does sanctioning work in the commons? How do you deal with other comments? How do you deal with uh, a general infrastructure or the state or the market? All these questions. And if you have this focus, so you focus on the process of commenting. And the third uh, way of looking at the comments to me is to look at the comments as an attitude, as a way of thinking, and as a huge contribution to a broader paradigm shift that's going on. So I think that if you learn that, if, if we understand that the commons is basically about us, about the way we relate to each other, in order to make sure that there are resources left for tomorrow, for the next generation, that there's fairness among us, and that we can act as free people. So the three conditions must be there. Free, fair, and sustainable <coughs> society is the goal. So if we learn that it's about us, if we learn how to put things in common, protect them as commons, etc., if we co-develop more organizations, legal forms, protective measures, to protect those social processes, So then we widen the space of the common and automatically shrink the space of the market. Which is a good thing to do, but we need to learn the how does it work, what concepts we need, and to speak another language because the, the notions we use um, don't work in the commons. I cannot talk about a job in a commoning process. A job is 
kind of working for other people's purposes on the market to get money, to use that money to get the means to make a living. Commoning is trying to fi find ways to co-creatively and productively co-create these means. To, 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 I restart. While commoning means collectively and co-creatively trying to directly, directly meet your needs, which does not mean that everybody has to make its own bread, right? There will still be a share in tasks. You can do what you feel prepared to do, what you like to do, as long as other commons provide um, for other needs. So then, if we get to this level, we can come in a small group and we have other commons that provide commons for other types of needs. We need to find out how to connect one with another. So we need to learn how this spreading the commons actually works. So we think about commons at a level of networks. And from there, thinking about a commons-based society automatically emerges. Because if it is true that you can basically convert everything into a commons, if the conditions are provided, if the infrastructure is there, if the people want to do so, and if we connect different commons, what we basically gain is autonomy and independency from the market. And this is the big... Mm, both challenge but also offer of the commons to explore new ways of providing mm, the means for our needs. Uh, the last thing was not good in English. It's not providing means for our needs. It's, it wasn't good. Um, and this is the big challenge but also the big offer of the commons. Commoning is something extremely generative and productive, not only for deepening social relationships, but also for producing things, stuff, shelter, uh, food, clothes, even cars, if people want. And if we can show that commons are productive while deepening social relations, while respecting this basic human condition that we are related to each other, we cannot be without the other. Then I think the commons thinking and practice will move forward and has, and has a big future. Uh, speaking in, in kind of ideal words, where there is no big corporation, there is no uh, enclosures, there is no states, etc. When we talk about the commons entering in politics these days, we seeing <coughs> some local experiences, open cooperativism. We seeing at the municipal level big experiences like Barcelona, Bologna. We seeing also global experiences, etc. And uh, I mean, these are kind of laboratories. Uh, how do you see? People now speak about the commons being the meme that would lead all these movements towards a transition to post-capitalism. You know. uh, how do you see that? Uh, do, do you see it's possible? What, what, what would be the steps to go there? For me, there is a basic need. Um, to be very clear about what do we want to achieve. And being clear about what do we want to achieve means not only being clear about how do we name the goal, I would say free, fair and sustainable society, but only on the basis of what kind of thinking and what those kind of social practices we want to achieve that goal. So do we want to do dirty politics? Do we want to engage in dirty politics? Do we want to engage in manipulation? Do we want to engage in 
mm, representative democracy. Do we want to found a party of, for commons? Do we want to do, spend our energy in lobbying? We need to answer those questions in order to move forward a commons agenda. Or do we think that the best way of moving forward a commons agenda is generating spaces and opportunities for two ways of transformation. First, real commoning experiences, like having a summer school for a week where people engage in a social process while learning to think like a commoner. And this will at the end of a week be an embodied experience. It goes directly through them, it goes through their minds, through their hearts and through their hands. This is one way. Real concrete commoning experience that will leave a trace in people's bodies and in people's minds. And the other way is actually learn how to think like a commoner. So really dig deeper in the history of ideas and understand where we are based upon in the history of ideas but also in our world view. What is our image of the human being we stand upon? How is the way we look at transition models for society? What is the language we need to convey the core ideas of the commons? We need to understand this, figure it out, and then determine the criteria, which are kind of the no-goes for a commoner. Say, is it okay? to just produce without chemicals, but do it, do the transaction the same way a, a normal market transaction is. That is, making better food, but selling it for a higher price and thus excluding the people who don't have access to money. Is that a way of doing commoning? Or is it just greening the economy? So we need to really understand the specifics of commoning through determining and defining together the principles of the commons. Two examples. If each commons is based on natural resources and each commons is a knowledge commons and we know that we cannot treat the natural resource the same way we, need, we treat knowledge because if you want to share natural resources, I only will get half and you only will get half. If you want to share knowledge, I can keep the whole knowledge, I share it with you, you will have and, and together we'll have even more. So that's very different. We cannot apply the same rule. So that is why one basic principle is the common, of the commons is free knowledge. And another basic principle is the commons fair share to each person involved. And fair share to each person cannot mean one dollar, one share. It actually means one person, one share. Another core principle is the all affected principle. All those people who are affected by a rule, a law, a commons, a resource system should take part in the decision-making process about this. Another core principle is you cannot have the same recipe, the same Another basic issue is that you cannot think of recipes when you think about governance of commons. You will always have to adapt your basic principles to the context, to the local context um, and uh, cultural conditions involved. So there are plenty of things like this we really need to be clear about conceptually and intellectually and then apply in different fields of politics. How do you think the commons could enter politics? Maybe you think that the commons ah. don't have to enter politics. Ah, okay, there, yeah, yeah. of course, yeah. Well, based on what I've just said, I think that perhaps the most efficient way to enter commons into politics is enter commons thinking into academia. That is, how is it even possible that when economics is thought, taught at academia. Yeah? It's basically about private goods. 
and a 10% about public goods. It's basically classical or neo even neoclassical economy. So we need to kind of have an impact in the way economy is thought. We need to have an impact in the way politics, sociology, etc. is thought, taught. And I think that um, anthropologists can help us a great deal in showing that there is something incredibly universal in the commons. Because it is not by hasard, par hasard, um, that you find examples for the commons and commons governance all over the world, in, in virtually every realm of, of life, and you find them um, throughout human history. So the commons is as old as mankind and as new as the internet and as free software. So I think that if we kind of dig deeper in the history of ideas, bring that to the surface, change the way we, we teach economy, sociology, and politics, and history, and kind of co-create a new thinking that at a given moment will have its impact on the way of doing politics because the people who do politics think differently, that might be a little bit more efficient than doing lobbying at the parliament because it's going to the root cause of the problem, decolonizing our minds. Mm -hmm. well, you think you have to work only at this, let's say, cultural or educational level? I think that in the commons there is no such thing as an only. Because if you talk about only, it's kind of an ex exclusive perspective, as if the other efforts would not be valuable as well. I always think that we need multiple strategies. Um, and perhaps if you want to change the world and you learn what kind of pillars the world stands upon and you really want to shake it, you better shake the pillars than the whole surface because it's easier to do. In a way, it's hard to do because you need to find out actually what these pillars are. I'm very convinced that these pillars are our way of thinking. And our way of thinking has converted us into the kind of human being we are and the way we interact out there in the streets. Um, and that we find it kind of normal that when you people ask, what do you need for a living? People will respond to you, money. But this is obviously not true. It's just an intermediary thing. So what you need to have a good life is good relationships, diversity of relationships, health, etc., etc., and certain things you actually cannot buy. So if you learn how to rethink the world and understand what are the pillars the current system is based upon, and we can shake the pillars, that would be a powerful tool, but certainly not the only one. And how long would it take? I mean, uh, we've been through almost 50 years of neoliberalism and more than 200 years of capitalism. Uh, the new generation didn't know other things that individualism through neoliberalism. Uh, how long would it take to have this change in the mentality of, of people? And during this time, do you see other things we could do to promote and advance the commons into politics? I learned, I guess, one of the reasons why I engage into the commons discourse and work and networks is because it's energizing me. And I learned to rely on those things that energize me. Because the most important thing we need to continue fighting for the commons is the energy within us. So I stopped wondering how long <coughs> it will take and looking at the concrete results. And as you just said, there's a, an emergence of common practices and an emergence of common debates 
all over the world right now, and this is a very exciting thing. And the other thing I learned, and I'm not a historian, but as a human being, and the other thing I learned is that sometimes political and historical change comes all of a sudden. So in 89, the wall came down. And I remember very well that five months before the wall came down, nobody really expected it. And this is not the only experience of a sudden change. So I hope this sudden change won't be triggered by a catastrophe, by the consequences of climate change, by the consequences of huge migratory uh, movements, etc. So what do you think of the new concepts so, uh, like uh, partner states, like uh, commons assemblies, commons chambers, uh, these kind of things in this uh, process towards uh, the commons entering into politics? Well, first of all, I think that a commons assembly and a commons chamber is nothing new at all. That is how always how co the commons was working. And it's kind of the, the very basic idea of deepening and enlivening democracy. So one of our up windows of opportunity, so to say, is that um, democracy is in crisis, representative democracy, the, the democracy be of shape where um, the political interests are channeled through political parties is in crisis. You can see this all over the world, especially in the Northern Hemisphere. And there is certainly a need to reinvent democracy in the sense of deepening and enlivening democracy. And I think that the Commons can contrib contribute to that debate precisely through ideas like Commons chambers, etc. But this is not the only thing. It's not, we, we should not think about the Commons in organizational forms. Because one of the most important things we need is to skilling us, reskilling us in commoning. Because for many people, it is hard to think about spending their time in collective decision making. And why is it hard to think? Because their life has been shaped in such a way that they need to work for other purposes uh, uh, eight days, eight days, uh, uh, eight hours a day, five days a week. So. I think it is not new, but this precisely is telling that it is powerful because ideas that have basically existed throughout human mankind's history cannot be another thing than powerful, right? So where do you think, for example, of uh, the, the urban common structures? A charter, for me, if you want to start a commons, the thing you need to start with is getting a clear idea of what are your basic principles. Getting a, getting a clear idea of what do you want to achieve. So, for me, starting with a charter is like of a very basic process of starting a commoning process, of transforming the way you do politics of transforming the political and social relationships of all those involved. Because the urban space is just something you cannot anymore think about as commoning in a small group where everybody knows everybody. So starting with a common charter, an urban charter, whatever charter, starting with a charter that is sitting down in assemblies, in a digital conversation, in a longer process and understanding it as a process which will never be finished because a charter is not a law, you cannot change. It is something that those who have written the charter can change and adapt to their needs. It's actually a first important step to go. Because if you're not, you are not clear about your basic principles and, and your goals, you will probably be co-opted. Okay, the last question yeah. would be how do you think that uh, a forum like the World Social Forum could help in the promotion of the commons? To be honest, my impression is that it is the first time that proposing the commons as a subject, as commons and not kind of 
paraphrase with another wording or something, really attracts people. And I think that it is um, because it's the first time that a world social reform takes place in a norm. Because it seems to me that uh, here it is something new to people, whereas in other regions of the world they have only always been involved in the comments and defending their comments, etc. And um, there has always been kind of a fear that there is a northern discourse overtaking our realities. Whereas here, I f it is wonderful full for me to see, for instance, this morning where they had a workshop that it was packed with people and the quality of the questions and the contributions were just excellent and people who are really involved in different uh, uh, fields of action. So I think that it is an enormous opportunity to connect with people you otherwise would have never the chance to meet because it's not your culture, it's not your country, it's not your language or it's not the technology or the platform you use. So I would have wished to have hundreds of commons events at this World Social Forum and I have the feeling that all of them would have been full of beautiful discussion of people. Thank you very much. Thank <laughs> you.